I'm going to preach today about celebrating Mass ad orientum. This is when the priest faces towards the cross during the Eucharistic prayer. He's facing the same direction as the people as he prays the Eucharistic prayer of the Mass. You perhaps haven't noticed this yet since you came into church, but we just this week had a platform built and installed here in the church. If, you, if you're familiar with the way the altar is configured up here, the altar was right out to the front of the steps, so I couldn't actually stand on this side of the altar. I had to stand on the back side of the altar. We now built a platform so that I can stand on either side of the altar, and I will be celebrating Mass today facing the cross, the ad orientum. And so I want to explain that. Um, if you grew up before... 1965, if you were at least young back then, you will remember that the priest always used to face the same direction as the people during the Mass. He would be facing the cross during the Eucharistic prayer. If for those of us who grew up after 1965, after the Second Vatican Council, we're really only familiar primarily with the priest standing on the back side of the altar facing the people during the Eucharistic prayer. This idea, this um, understanding of, of ad orientum has been on my heart for a long time and I'm really excited to be able to share with you what does it mean? Why does the church, the church did this for hundreds of years that the priest would always face the same way as the people during worship. Why was that and why do I think it's a good thing that we should become familiar with again here at our parish? Unfortunately many people simply reduce celebrating the mass ad orientum they say, well, the priest is just turning his back on us. Unfortunately, that completely misses the point. That's not at all what the priest is doing. He's not trying to turn his back on the people. Rather, he's turning the same direction as the people so that all of us together, priest and people alike, we're facing the cross together. We're worshiping God together. It's not the priest doing his thing on the back side of the altar and the people watching on the front side of the altar. It's everybody together seeking God. That's the symbolism of what's happening in ad orientum worship. Let me say from the start, too, that I realize that not everyone here maybe will be completely comfortable with this because it might be new or it might be going way back for you. And I just want you to know, I respect wherever you might be at with this. If you don't prefer this kind of direction of worship, um, I, I definitely respect that. And so my intention isn't to, to shove this down everybody's throats and say, we're, we're now only going to do this here at IC. Rather, I want to begin to introduce it and we're slowly going to begin making it as an opportunity for those who wish to come to Masses facing this direction. We'll have that opportunity and I'll remain doing Masses on the back side of the altar for those who wish that as well. I also want to say, um, just again simply, that I'm, I'm not going to just suddenly change all of the Masses to this. Uh, we're going to slowly begin offering both opportunities. Okay, so let me begin by first explaining the term itself. The term ad orientum means literally toward the east. It's a Latin term. It comes two Latin words, ad orientum. The word ad simply means towards, two or towards. And then orientum, like we have the word oriental or the orient, which means the east. And so ad orientum means towards the east. The idea is that this comes from scripture and it comes from just real life. Where does the sun rise from? The sun rises in the east. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. He is the sun who has come into our world. He's broken into our world and he's risen bringing light. Jesus is the light of the world. And so Christians for 2,000 years have kind of looked to the east as a special way of looking toward the coming of Christ. And so ad orientum, looking towards the east, is, the, is kind of the Christian direction of worship, that we're looking towards the coming of Christ. Now, if you know directions here in the church, you might be like, well, Father, east is that way. We're not facing east or any, you know, we're facing north. The church calls this, so ad orientum is not simply physical east, it's what's called liturgical east. So even if we didn't even know which way was east, when we're facing the cross, that is what's called liturgical east. We're facing Christ together as priest and people together 
facing the cross of Christ. And so the, the cross behind the altar is liturgical east. And so it's odd oriented when we're facing that direction together. The idea of celebrating Mass facing east or facing ad orientum is twofold, and these things are connected. The first is that we're facing towards God. We're seeking God. That's the whole point of worship, is that we're seeking God. And then secondly, that we're doing that together as priests and people together, a common direction we're facing. It's almost like we're, we're walking towards God together. And so it's not that the priest is on one side of the altar, he does his thing, and the people are on their side doing their thing. We're, at, we're united in this. Our worship is together as priests and people together. The priest, of course, leading the people, but it's like he's the leader walking before the whole community, bringing us to Christ. That's what ad orientum is symbolic of. The two ways of celebrating Mass, ad orientum, or what we call versus popolo, so when the priest is facing the people, it's, the Latin term is versus popolo, meaning facing the people. These two directions of worship emphasize two different things. And that's why the church has given us the opportunity to celebrate Mass on either side of the altar. When the priest is facing the people during the Eucharistic prayer, it helps us to understand that the Mass is the celebration of the Lord's Last Supper. Right, so you can think of like when I'm standing on the back side of the altar and you're all gathered on the front side of the altar, it's kind of like we're gathered around the table of the Lord. We're sitting together at the Lord's table for the meal of the Last Supper, the Lord's dinner. And that's an important point that we're being fed from the altar, right? This is the table of the Lord where we receive communion. When we're celebrating Mass, though, ad orientum, when the priest is standing on the same side as the people facing the same direction, it highlights the sacrificial nature of the Mass more. The Mass is the sacrifice of Jesus Christ giving himself, offering himself totally to the Father. That's what the cross is all about. Jesus died on the cross, giving his body and blood, giving his whole self to the Father for us. And that's what's happening every single Mass. When the priest holds up the bread and wine, he's not doing that so that the people can see it. At least not, that's not the first reason he holds it up. He holds it up first so that the Father can see it. So that we hold it up and say, Father, we offer you the body and blood of Christ. And so when the priest is on the same side of the altar as the people, it's more clearly that this isn't, first of all, a meal where we're all gathered here, but it's first a sacrifice. And then once it's been offered to the Father, then it's given back to us as a meal and as communion. And so you can see the, the two sides of the altar, they kind of represent two different things, the, kind of the, the meal or the sacrifice. I think it's actually better, though, it's more important to, offer, to, to emphasize the sacrifice of the Mass. Because if we, if we start with the meal, it's harder to get to the sacrificial part. But if we start with the sacrifice, then once we've offered it to God, it comes back down to us as the meal. Anyway, I hope that makes sense. Just there's the two elements of the, of the, the Eucharistic prayer that are emphasized depending upon how we're celebrating. Of course, they're all, they're both combined, they're both there no matter which side of the altar we're celebrating on, but those are kind of the main two highlights. Okay, so the other thing too is that when the priest is standing on, on this side of the altar doing ad orientum, it helps make it more clear too that what the priest is doing at the altar is not just for the people to watch. It's not like the priest is just like, okay, hey everybody, I'm going to just redo what Jesus did at the Last Supper. So just you all sit there and watch me, ready? I'm going to take the bread and say, this is my body like Jesus did. Rather, when the priest is facing the same way as the people, it's an invitation for you to be joined in that sacrificial offering. So it's not just my doing something that you watch, but it's your coming with me, coming behind me, and offering the sacrifice to the Father. Right, it happens through the hands of the priest, but all of you as baptized Christians are offering the sacrifice of the Mass with me. Right, that's why the priest says, pray brothers and sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. This is the main point of the Eucharistic prayer, that it's not first a moment for the people to see what the priest is doing. It's first a moment for us together as the body of Christ to offer up the sacrifice to the Father through the hands of the priest. 
Many people think that the Second Vatican Council required that churches would pull the altars away from the wall and that the priests then would, would have to stand on the back side of the altar and face the people. That's actually a misunderstanding. The, the Second Vatican Council actually never said we had to do that. They said it was an option that we could now celebrate Mass ad orientum or versus populo. But it didn't demand that we do that. In fact, the missal, the Roman missal for Mass, so the, the big red book that we use for Mass that tells us what to do, it actually assumes the priest is going to be celebrating Mass ad orientum. Let me just give you an example. Right after, so after the consecration, just before communion time, it says that the priest takes the Eucharist and he holds it up and he says, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Right? You all know that part. And the missal specifically says that the priest says that while facing the people. So the priest says, behold the Lamb of God while facing the people. The very next thing the, the missal says is it says, then, then the priest consumes the body of Christ and it says he does that while facing the altar. Why would the missile say he does one thing facing the people and then the very next thing facing the altar if that was not two different things? Right? If the priest is still is he's facing the people no matter what he's doing, then why does it emphasize he now faces the altar when he receives communion? What I'm, the point is, the missile is assuming if the priest is standing on this side of the altar praying ad orientum, it emphasizes he needs to turn around and show the people the Eucharist when he says, behold, the Lamb of God. But then when he receives communion, he turns back to the altar when, as he receives. So in other words, the church very much encourages that we would still continue celebrating Mass ad orientum. A parishioner here recently told me that she attended a Mass um, at a different parish in our diocese where the priest celebrated Mass ad orientum. And she commented to me that she said, I noticed that I was drawn to look at the cross almost the entire Mass. And she just, she's, she realized that I wasn't just like watching the priest, but I was, I was looking up at the cross. And I just thought that's such a beautiful insight because the Mass isn't first of all, oh, let's watch Father. The Mass is let's encounter God. And that's what the, the cross reminds us of, is that's where our worship is directed. Our worship is directed to the Father through the Son on the cross. And especially when the priest is praying the Eucharistic prayer, that we would be drawn up into the mystery of the Lord's cross as he gives himself to the Father through the hands of the priest as we, as we celebrate the Eucharist. And so how beautiful that as the priest, as you'll notice when I when I celebrate Mass Ad Orientum, I'll hold the Eucharist up high over my head so you can still see the Lord as I consecrate him. But just think about this as, as, I'm, as I'm doing that. Look through the Eucharist to the cross. Our churches were actually very intentionally designed this way. That as the priest holds up the Lord, we would see the, the Lord sacramentally there and we would see the Lord on the cross because the two are the same. Jesus in my hands in that moment is the Jesus who is giving himself, sacrificing himself to the Father, just as he did on the cross 2,000 years ago. Beautiful connection. Whereas when the priest is on the other side of the altar, facing the people, we naturally look at him. We naturally look at his face and what he's, what he, like what he's doing. But when he's facing the same way as us, we naturally are drawn through the priest. He becomes a window into heaven. The priest becomes a window that we see God through him. And so I especially want to just encourage you, see through me. You know, this, in this sense, it doesn't matter which priest is saying Mass, really, is that we see through the priest to see Jesus there. Another very helpful thing to consider is simply how the liturgy is structured. You're familiar with there's two primary parts of the Mass. The liturgy of the Word, which is what we're doing right now, and then the liturgy of the Eucharist. The liturgy of the word, when we have the readings proclaimed and the homily given, is it's all about the lector or the priest speaking to the people, right? We want to give, bring the word of God, bring the scriptures to the people and teach the people. It would never make sense for the priest to turn around as he does the gospel or the homily. 
right? Because I'm obviously, I'm speaking to you when I do the liturgy of the word, when I'm giving the homily. It wouldn't make sense for me to talk to you this way, right? My body language t- tells you I'm speaking to you because I'm facing you. But in the second part of the Mass, the liturgy of the Eucharist, who is the priest speaking to? It's no longer primarily the people. Rather, the priest is now speaking to the Father. The priest changes his focus from teaching the people to now speaking to the Father. And so that's why the the church for 2,000 years, basically, always the priest was facing the same way as the people as a common way that all of us are facing the Father, which is sacramentally or, or symbolically represented by the cross of Christ, that together we look to the Lord who is there. Another real life story that connects with this symbolism is something a a priest friend of mine told me. Um, He said that his grandfather is a Missouri Synod Lutheran pastor. And he said that once when he was visiting his grandfather, he noticed that in his grandfather's church, the altar is pushed up against the wall. So when when he's standing at the altar doing prayers, He's facing the wall. He's, he's facing the same way as the people, right? He's facing ad orientum. And once, and so this priest friend of mine, he asked his grandpa, he said, why do you face the wall? Why do you face away from the people when you're praying the prayers at the altar? And his grandpa said this, he said, when I'm speaking to the people, I face the people. But when I'm speaking to God, I turn and face God. Like what a simple way to explain it. And he's not even Catholic, right? This isn't even Catholic worship. How much more for us as Catholics, that's why the church for so many hundreds of years faced that direction together. To have this understanding when the priest speaks to the people, he faces the people. And then when we speak to the Father, we turn and face the Father. So if somebody asks you, why is Father Vandenberg doing this now at IC? Maybe that's the most simple explanation. Just say, Father just told us, he said, when he's speaking to us, he faces us. And when he's speaking to God, he turns and faces God, symbolically. And so again, in a certain sense, the priest disappears. It's no longer the focus on me, but it's the focus on God who we are seeking together as a whole community. I realize again that not everyone is maybe going to be totally on board with this or fully appreciate this kind of worship yet. And I I want you to know that I respect that. I don't expect to just shove this down everybody's throat and say, you have to like this. You have to accept this. And so this weekend, I will be celebrating all three weekend masses ad orientum so that everyone can get a taste of it and experience it. But going forward, I'm going to be just celebrating one Sunday mass, just the 10 o'clock mass after this weekend will be celebrated ad orientum. The Saturday night and the 8 a.m. will be still celebrated versus popolo for those who wish to have that continue in the, in the way that they worship. Also for weekday masses, I'll be doing about half and half. I'll be doing Tuesdays and Thursdays still versus Popolo and Wednesdays and Fridays ad orientum. I've posted some more information on our website about ad orientum and I encourage you to go there. Um, there's a just, um, yeah, some more, a couple of articles and some pictures that might help with this explanation as well. There's also an insert in today's bulletin that's a very, very well-written article by a priest who started this at his own parish in the United States and how he explained why he did it and, and how he introduced this to his parish. So let me conclude with this. The Mass is all about encountering God. That's why we're here, to encounter God. And when we celebrate the Mass ad orientum, It's not to say that Versus Popolo is wrong or is bad. That's not the point. But rather, it's it's symbolically, it kind of physically shows us that the Mass is is seeking the Father. We turn together, we're, we're on pilgrimage together towards God as a community of faith. The priest leading the people to God through the cross of Jesus Christ. So if this is a new experience for you, or perhaps it's a it's a way old experience for you. I just encourage you to have an open mind and an open heart um, and let's really seek to encounter God who is truly present here and who is always with us whenever we celebrate the Holy Mass.